answer the banana, so. Why is this light stand so short? I'm short. This doesn't make sense. Nothing in life makes sense. Um, I don't want to hurt you. Not now, anyway. So, first of all, I want to, um, I want to say thank you to Labyrinth. That was an amazing, amazing uh, performance. I, I, uh, I never, I thought, um, I'm a huge fan of his. I heard his song, Jealousy, and I, I play it over and over again, and I cry over and over again. Um, he, he's truly amazing. I'm touched. Can I put this down? Seriously? <laughs> it's better this way. I always feel better with something hard between my legs. <laughs> I stand before you as a doormat. Oh, I mean a female entertainer. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for acknowledging my ability to continue my career for 34 years in the face of blatant misogyny, sexism, constant bullying, and relentless abuse. When I started, there was no internet, so people had to say it to my face. There were very few people I had to clap back at because life was simpler then. People were just dying of AIDS everywhere. Manhattan was under the siege of a plague and it wasn't safe to be gay. It wasn't cool to be associated with the gay community. When I first moved to New York, I was a teenager. It was 1979 and New York was a very scary place. In the first year, I was held up at gunpoint, raped on a rooftop with a knife digging into my throat, and I had my apartment broken into and robbed so many times, I just stopped locking the door. In the years to follow, I lost almost every friend I had to AIDS or drugs or gunshot. As you can imagine, all these unexpected events not only helped me become the daring woman that stands before you, but it also reminded me that I am vulnerable. And in life, there is no real safety except self-belief. And an understanding that I am not the owner of my talents. I'm not the owner of anything. Everything I have is a gift from God. And even the shitty, fucked up things that happen to me, that still happen to me, are also gifts to teach me lessons and make me stronger. No matter how much I cry about it when I'm alone, no matter how much I rant about the unfairness of it all to any friend who will listen, I'm not here so much because I care about awards. I'm here because I want to say thank you. I'm receiving an award for being woman of the year, so I ask myself, what can I say about being a woman in the music business? What can I say about being a woman? When I first started writing songs, I didn't think in a gender specific way. I didn't think about feminism. I just wanted to be an artist. I was, of course, inspired by Debbie Harry and Chrissy Hine and Aretha Franklin, but my real muse was David Bowie. He embodied male, yes. <laughs> he embodied male and female spirit, and that suited me just fine. He made me think there were no rules, but I was wrong. There are no rules. 
if you're a boy. If you're a girl, you have to play the game. What is that game? You are allowed to be pretty and cute and sexy, but don't act too smart. Don't have an opinion. Don't have an opinion that is out of line with the status quo, at least. You are allowed to be objectified by men and dress like a slut, but don't own your sluttiness. And do not, I repeat, do not share your own sexual fantasies with the world. Be what men want you to be, but more importantly, be what women feel comfortable with you being around other men. And finally, do not age, because to age is a sin. You will be criticized, you will be vilified, and you will definitely not be played on the radio. When I first became famous, there were new photos of me in Playboy and Penthouse magazine. Photos that were taken from art schools that I posed for back in the day to make money. They weren't very sexy. In fact, I looked quite bored. I, w I was. Um, but I was expected to feel ashamed when these photos came out. And I was not. And this puzzled people. Eventually, I was left alone because I married Sean Penn. And not only would he bust a cap in your ass, <laughs> but I was taken off the market. So for a while, I was not considered a threat. Years later, divorced and single, sorry, Sean, I made my erotica album and my sex book was released. I remember being the headline of every newspaper and magazine. And everything I read about myself was damning. I was called a whore and a witch. One headline compared me to Satan. I said, wait a minute. Isn't Prince running around with fishnets and high heels and lipstick with his butt hanging out? Yes, he was, but he was a man. This was the first time I truly understood that women really did not have the same freedom as men. I remember walking down the street in New York with Alec Kashishian, the director of Truth or Dare, on a freezing cold night. And I said to him, I feel like the most hated person on the planet. I remember feeling paralyzed. It took me a while to pull myself together and get on with my creative life, to get on with my life. I took comfort in the poetry of Maya Angelou and the writings of James Baldwin and in the music of Nina Simone. I remember wishing that I had a female peer that I could look to for support. Camille Paglia, the famous feminist writer, said that I set women back by objectifying myself sexually. Oh, I thought. So if you're a feminist, you don't have sexuality. You deny it. So I said, fuck it. I'm a different kind of feminist. I'm a bad feminist. <laughs> a few years later, my daughter was born. And this new life gave birth to my album, Ray of Light, and an interest in universal laws, the concept of cause and effect, and the desire to have a spiritual life. I realized that I could not be a victim any longer, that everything happened for a reason. And my job was to learn from every shit storm I wandered into, and to persevere. In 1984, I know, I'm jumping backwards. I made my first big 
TV appearance on the Dick Clark show, and I sang my song, Holiday. At the end of the show, Dick shoved a microphone in my face, and he asked me if I had any plans for the future, and I said, yeah, I want to rule the world. I watch that footage, I look back at that moment, and I am stunned by my audacity. I had not planned to say that, it just fell out of my mouth, like most things. <laughs> However, my ego understood years later that if you ask the universe for a lot, you're gonna get a lot. It just won't always be pleasant. So once you embrace and accept this universal law, you just might survive, not only the entertainment business, not only the music business, but you just might survive this crazy thing called life. My nose is now running. <laughs> Wipe that on my Gucci suit. I said this last week in Miami at my fundraiser and I'll say it again. People say that I'm so controversial, but I think the most controversial thing I have ever done is to stick around. <laughs> Michael is gone, Tupac is gone, Prince is gone, Whitney is gone, Amy Winehouse is gone, David Bowie is gone, but I'm still standing. one of the lucky ones, and every day I count my blessings. There are so many other chapters I'd like to share with you, but they said I only had three minutes, and I'm pretty sure I went over that. <laughs> what I'd like to share with you as an artist is this. We live in a world now where we get information fast, but we don't get knowledge. Knowledge needs to be earned. There are no easy rides. Society perpetuates the idea of no process. Technology means we get what we want faster and easier. But are we happier? Are we more successful? Does it mean that we have achieved more? I think you know the answer to that. Put your focus on what you have to say to the world not what the world has to say about you. What I would like to say to all the women here today is this. Women have been so oppressed for so long, they believe what men have to say about them. And they believe they have to back a man to get the job done. And there are some very good men worth backing but not because they're men, because they're worthy. As women, we have to start appreciating our own worth and each other's worth. Seek out strong women to befriend, to align yourself with, to learn from, to be inspired by, to collaborate with, to support, to be enlightened by. True solidarity amongst women is a power all on its own, and no opposing force stands a chance in the face of this solidarity. But women need to feel secure enough to trust themselves, to believe in themselves, and when we do, we will be unstoppable. As I said before, it's not so much about receiving this award as it is having this opportunity to stand before you and really say thank you as a woman, as an artist, as a human. Not only to the people who have loved and supported me along the way, so many of you are sitting in front of me right now, you have no idea. You have no idea how, how much your support means.
but to the doubters, the naysayers, to everyone who gave me hell and said I could not, that I would not, that I must not. Your resistance made me stronger, made me push harder, made me the fighter that I am today, made me the woman that I am today. So thank you. Elvis Presley moment with the microphone like that. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Anderson. You're amazing. Thank you, everyone here tonight, today, for your support. Um, sorry, I'm such a crybaby. 